on this study of fools 189 verses 199 times does the Bible say from Genesis to Revelation the subject of fool fool 66 times foolish 52 times foolishly 12 times foolishness 20 fools 42 and fools as a possession seven times and there are good fools and there are bad fools in the Bible and with the grace and mercy of God and Lord willing I like to go through each one of these fools in the Bible whether we should be or we should not be I ask that you pray for us as we go through this. Now this lessons that we do is not for you to skip church and not be in a church. These lessons are extra. They can be used on your time to learn, to pass out, to give to your friends, to download, use, get them out, please. But on this full study, remarkably, we're going to study something. A Bible subject, and in most cases, a fool is somebody you do not want to be. We want to be what God wants us to be. And prayerfully, this lesson will have you to do right. Pray for us and help us get this word out. Well, I ask that you pray for us that we can continue with these video ministries. And what we're doing, what I'm trying to do is help you. I want you to do right. I'm not trying to start a church or not trying to replace a church. Well, I'm not trying to start. I'd like to have God use me for a church here in Daytona, around the cities. But we're not trying to replace. We don't want you not go to church and watch these videos or listen to the audios. It's not what the Bible says. You're supposed to be amongst a congregation of saved people, fellowship. I mean, you're going to need their help. I'm, I'm not going to be able to come to your funeral. I can't come to your bedside at the hospital. You gotta have friends and pastors to be able to do that where you are. Now you may be in an area where there are no churches. Email me and I'll pray with you about God sending something somebody. The Bible says you know that the harvest is white. Pray that God will send. So what we're gonna do is pray for me. He like Satan just throws time at me and there's things right now coming up. I want to continue to do these. I want to continue to do other outreaches. And this is, you know, we're going to start a new study here. And the things in my mind is I, I want to finish these. I want the time and God give me a method right now that for pay and stuff like that and it be not hindered. And what we're going to do today, we're going to start another series. And aren't you working too much? No. Because if you go to Sunday school, you got a series. You go to preaching service Sunday morning, you got a series. You got Sunday night, and Thursday night. You may have your favorite cassette. Uh, we've got, like I said, the devil just messes with my week. We've got Philemon, we're studying. We've got our nightly Bible study with my family that we're going through right now, Genesis. We're coming to the end of that pretty soon. Uh... I'm working on right now still the our hymns, the biblical truth of our hymns. And I'd like to start one more. I'd like to start a, a full study. Now, I've started it before, and it got stopped, and then pick it back up. And it was during a time uh, of waiting to move down Florida. Got packed up, got packed away, and lost. And I redid the study. And 
if there's one thing that the Bible really says of many things about salvation, about the Christian life, is the Bible does not want us to be foolish. It does not want us to be fools. It does not want us to be foolish, doing things foolishly, in foolishness, and fools. We are not to be a fool. And yet there are some things in the Christian life that are relating to fool. And we got 189 scriptures with fool. And we're going to look at fool 66 times. Foolish, 52 times. Foolishly, 12. Foolishness, 20. Fools, 42. Fools as a possession, 7. And where we get each night, I got 27 pages here. And you know me, if you listen, I'm, no, I'm in no rush. <laughs> you know that. So, let's begin Genesis 31. The first place that the fool will show up. 31, 28. 31, 28. I don't know how many will do. 31, 28. This is Laban talking to Jacob. Jacob has left. Laban, he's on his way home. Back to Isaac. Laban has misused, misused both Jacob and his daughters. And Laban takes off on a flight to chase after Jacob. God meets Laban one night and says, Take heed that, that thou speakest not to Jacob, either good or or bad, you better leave Jacob alone. That I will bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. That's on Jacob. You be careful. You be careful how you deal with him. So the first time the fool shows up between Laban and Joseph, and we see in verse 28, And hast thou not suffered me to kiss my sons and my daughters? Thou hast done foolishly in so doing. So the first fool we see is foolishly. And it has to do with departing goodbye. And as I said, Jacob has fled Laban for hard, cruel treatment. And wage changes. Laban is a man that you cannot trust. Jacob will say, hey, you changed my wages ten times. I served seven years for Rachel. I got Leah. I had to serve seven more years for Rachel. Fourteen years. God told Jacob, leave. Go back to Isaac. I wouldn't give Laban a second chance. And the principal foolishness here is not allowing a proper goodbye. The family is leaving for a new life in a new area. Laban will not see his daughters or his grandchildren ever again. That's foolish. And Jacob's scared. Laban proves to be scared. Coming down to Florida, I said goodbye to our families. My wife did. And we left. There's some family I didn't see because I didn't want to see. Truly, they didn't want anything to do with the Lord, and they did not want anything to do with me, and left. Is it right or wrong here? That's a hard one. Because you know what Jacob fears? That, and he'll say that, I fear you're going to steal my children, you're going to steal my wives, and send me off empty. And now if that's what kind of family that Jacob has, that's the kind of family that you have, that you fear them for doing wrong to you and your family. I go. As Jacob has done. 
God told Jacob to go. He didn't tell him to say goodbye, everybody like that. He told him, go, go home. He went and talked to his wife. He said, listen, it's time. God spoke to me. Let's go. And they have attitudes towards their dad. Say, well, let's go. So, foolishness is not saying goodbye. But in Jacob's case, that's the first foolishness in the Bible, the first fool. You didn't allow me to say goodbye to my children. You probably should have taken it. It wasn't for God. Numbers 12. Numbers chapter 12. And why am I in 2 Kings? Ooh, too far. Numbers chapter 12. I don't want you to be foolish in the wrong way. I'm having a hard time here. My page is sticking my Bible. I apologize. I don't know why they do it. Okay, Numbers 12, verse 11. And Aaron said unto Moses, Alas, my Lord, I beseech thee, lay not the sin upon us, wherein we have done foolishly, wherein we have sinned. Now what happened here? Let's go back to verse number 1. And Miriam and Aaron spake against Moses because of the Ethiopian woman whom he had married. For he had married an Ethiopian woman. And they said, Hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken by us also? I mean, has he not spoken also by us? And the Lord heard it. Now the man Moses was very meek above all the men which were upon the face of the earth. And the Lord spake suddenly unto Moses, unto Aaron, unto Mary, and come out ye three unto the tabernacle of the congregation. And they three came out. And the Lord rebukes them for, for speaking ill of Moses. You've done wrong. Your mouth too much. And in the repentance of Aaron, again, it's foolishly. Now, there is no charge against Moses, God said. So what Aaron and Miriam were doing is where they were lying. And the foolishness is the lies about the man of God. Now, I'm going to be careful here because, you know, you can't say, oh, every pastor. Because what if I get up and say any pastor's name that I don't know, I'm going to give a name, a man named Wood. Probably some guy there named Wood. And let's say Wood, who is a pastor of a church somewhere, the idonic idiot church, okay, I hopefully there's no church named that. I don't know even what I said, but let's say he's doing wrong. Let's say if I come up and say, listen, that guy is involved with the NIV. He teaches that his church or the church will go through the tribulation period and that Jesus is not God. Well, let's go with, let's go with some of the reality. How I will tell you that the Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus is not God and they told me themselves. Now, am I speaking foolish when it comes to that, to that man named Wood? Would that be to about the Jehovah Witness? No. I haven't lied. So that's not foolish talk. So what if you do get, you know, because the first thing you would do, pastors munch on to Moses like they're Moses and they're not. I know Moses is a sinner like we're all sinners. And they will take this man. Oh, you're not supposed to speak about the pastor. Well, if he's doing wrong, you should address the pastor. They didn't, and we don't. It is foolish. Foolishly. To be speaking ill of anybody in lines. It is foolish. Half truths. The Baptist Gospel Gossip Club. 
It is wrong. I had a time in a church with my first wife speaking foolishly. Proclaiming, if I can remember correctly, my wife was having an affair. Which is totally wrong because we were on the phone all the time. During those times. But that was foolish talk. Now I have said things about pastors. And when you look at their churches today, it's not foolish. I've been right. By the Bible, by the Holy Spirit, and by God. And I've been wrong. And that's foolish. I've had to explain to my family that we've been in a church somewhere and that what that man said out of the pulpit is wrong. Chapter and verse. That's not foolish. That's edification to my family to grow right in the Bible. And man, if you have to, if that man said something in the pulpit, that is wrong. You are obligated as the member of your family, the head, the husband, and the, the father of your household. To teach your children right. Now he'll answer to God. And you will answer to God for your family. We had a thing the other day. I went to the scripture and showed I could have been right or I could have been wrong. One of those things. But you know, I showed my family. This is what this scripture said. This is what this scripture said. And this is what that scripture says. And we did not come to a full conclusion. But it wasn't about the pastor of my church. So, you know, oh, you know, what church does he go to? You know, see, now you're already starting. But that goes for people. In your church, people you know, your boss, your co-workers, your family. If you lie about them, it is foolish. Don't be a fool by lying. Okay? I mean, I ain't going by my notes. Um, so... And then we have another thing here is, we've done foolishly. Okay? Where we have sinned. And some will take the foolishness of this chapter and say, because you spoke against mixed marriage. For Moses had married an Egyptian woman. And Aaron and Miriam are going at it, about it. Read verses 1 to 16. And see where God addresses the context of Miriam and Aaron. On marrying a, a woman outside of his race. Nowhere does God address about the mixed marriage. He addresses that Moses is a meek man. Moses is approved by God himself. Moses is speaking by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. How dare you put him down? For hath the Lord indeed spoken only by Moses? Has he not spoken by us also? And the Lord heard it. What is the charge against Aaron, Aaron and Miriam? You dared the authority that God is speaking to Moses. That's the problem. It has nothing to do with mixed marriage. God has affirmed in chapter 12, I am speaking through Moses. You better hear, you better listen. That's hard today because Paul tells us, you know, that there are ministers who are Satan's ministers to the Corinthian church. So don't go off on the other, every pastor you speak about, you know, you're doing, no. 
There are deceivers and they are named by Jesus. They are named by Jude. They are named by the Apostle Paul. And when you tell the truth about a false prophet in his ministry, you are doing the truth and you are edifying the body of Christ. But when you got somebody who God is using and speaking through and working through and you do say something about them and it is a lie, you are foolish. Let's stand with that. I don't think we need to go any further. So let's go to Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. I mean, do you really, I don't know what's going to happen, but I may speak foolish like Paul said, we're going to see that much later on. But the Bible says we're going to get a new name in heaven. My name will not be Stiley. What if the new name we get in heaven is by our characteristic? Jewish name are given after the child is born, even much after the child is born. Esau, Isaac, was named by God before he was born. Listen, laughter. Every time you call that boy, every time you think of Isaac, I want you to remember that you laughed when I told you you were going to have that baby. Eve, the mother of all living. What if by chance, and would you really want if it would be possible for your new name in all eternity to be, hey, what's your name, fool? I don't know. Because we're going to see in Psalms, a fool has said in his heart that there's no God. That fool goes out to save, goes out the lost. Males and females in pulpits in pews and I've already told you that we're going to come across they're going to be Lord willing and I said pray that we can go through these messages all of them and more I got so much more pray to God use me God has given me much wisdom and ain't doing much right now But would you like to be called a fool by God? So Deuteronomy chapter 32 verse 6. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Foolish people and unwise. Fools are not wise. Is not he thy father that brought thee? Has he not made thee? And establish thee. So 32 6, we see foolish. We've been doing foolishly. Foolishly. Now we got foolish. And we've got the song of Moses here. Fools and double fools. Fools indeed. To insult or offend or trouble one. On whom your entirely depends. Speaking against God. Going against God. Requite is to repay or pay. God led them through the wilderness. He led them out of Egypt. And they have corrupted themselves. 32.5 To forsake your own mercies for lying vanities. Excuse me. So, the foolishness here, verse 5, they have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of these children. They are perverse in a crooked generation. There is, right there, the foolish. And that's where America stands. You are foolish if you have corrupted and you have perverse, and you are crooked. Now, there are occupations 
that match what I just read to you. In the eyes of God, those occupations and the people of them are foolish. God has done great things for you. And this would be speaking for a Christian. God has done great things and you have returned back to the world. You have turned your back on Jesus Christ and you are foolish. As far as a lost man, God has given us creation. He made us. He designed us. He gave us all that we need to survive. Air, water, food. And he gave us by his love the Lord Jesus Christ. And you turned your back from the salvation. You turned your back from the creator. And your actions. Are foolish. That's a wide, big statement of the Holy Spirit. And this is the song of Moses. This is to be sung. It's to remind you. It was to remind the Jews. And I think what we'll do is, I think we'll just. I think we'll do three at a time. Does that sound? Can we into our mind and think about Lord willing to the next time? Think about foolish foolishly foolishly and foolish. Can we at least digest that? Our goodbyes are speaking about lies to other people, about other people, and turning away from the God that has provided our needs. I think that's enough to digest right now. I can say these three things, let us not be fools. Here, these three foolish things that we started to study as should be not anything that we do to be called fools. And again, these studies are that you may not be a fool. But again, like I said, there are some good fools in the Bible. Lord willing, we'll get to them all. But First three fools, full, Genesis 31, 28, Numbers 12, 11, and Deuteronomy 32, 6. Let us not be charged with these. And on one case like that, let me go over here first, John. Make sure I get it right. We'll go over to first, John. If we have... If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And if we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. And I mean, if you're going to say, well, I never said anything bad about anybody wrong. Well, I never turned my back on God. You've sinned. You need to repent. 